Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Model Building Start to Finish. This is John sitting with Dan. And we're still working on this really cool silver box car. What are we going to do this week, Dan? Um, well, it's time to start the weathering process. The car is pretty much complete now. So um, when I start weathering a car, I usually like to start with the wheels and paint the wheels. So I've got some um, testers railroad tie brown. That's a nice grimy color. Yeah, and I'm just going to use it on a brush and start painting. And what I like to do is just kind of stick the brush on the wheel and then rotate the wheel around. And that gives a nice even coat. So I also do the back sides of the wheels while I'm at it. Is that because you'll see them when it's rolling down the track? Right, potentially, yeah. I also like to paint the axles, just in case they show, too. I try to keep the paint off of the wheel treads, but if a little bit gets on there, we'll clean it up later. Yeah, I remember all this from the weathering and detailing rolling stock videos. It's it's pretty much the same thing as what we saw on those, huh? Yeah, pretty much. So I'm going to use my motor tool to clean off the wheel treads. I have a wire brush attachment on it. And I'm going to make sure that the wire brush attachment faces slightly outwards so that I don't scrape any paint off the outside of the wheels. Yeah. Also, if you're going to do this, I think this is worth mentioning, Dan. And I, I'm sure people that have motor tools know this, but this is really important. Wear, say, eye protection because yeah. these little wire bristle things shooting off at 100 miles an hour would really damage your eye. Yeah, especially with the wire bristle things because they do lose bristles. Yeah, I've, and they're I've so they're it. so thin it would just go yeah, straight like into a little your needle. eye. Yeah. It's like a little needle flying through the air. So yeah, yeah make sure to use safety glasses. So the car has been turned around now, and you can see how shiny the wheel tread is there where Dan's index finger is. So basically, he's just using the wire brush to, to uh, I don't know, buff out the paint that's on the, the wheel treads. It, yeah. wor it works really well. So now I'm airbrushing the car with some thinned Model Master Earth Color paint. And I thin the paint with Windex, actually. Windex? Yeah, seems to work pretty well. And I'm using just literally a few drops of paint and then filling the rest of the jar with uh, Windex. So it's very, very thin. Oh, so we're going for a really subtle effect here. Right, right. And what I, what this does is it simulates a little bit of road dust. But again, it's very thin. It's, it's almost hard to see. You don't want to put too much on. Yeah. Um, but it does a couple of things. Uh, it kind of helps blend everything together. And it also dulls the finish even more than the dull coat does. So it gives it a nice, really matte finish. Yeah. So a question, I notice that you, when you do this, you move the car. What, what's, what's that about? Um, that's to avoid imprinting the wheel faces with uh, silhouettes of the side frames. Oh, right. Like the opposite of overspray. <laughs> right. Because if you don't move the wheels, then you'll have this nice little design on them as they roll around and that doesn't look very good so yeah I, I like to move the wheels I also put a little bit of paint on the ends of the car and on the top too just to kind of make it all uniform so now that I've airbrushed the car I'm going to use a little bit of pan pastels this is called burnt sienna tint this particular one I'm using although it doesn't really look too much like burnt sienna to me it's more of a cream color <laughs> but Anyway, what I'm going to do with this is I got some in a micro brush and I'm going to use it on the wheel rims. Oh, just on the out. Huh, interesting. It just puts a little bit of color on the wheel rims. 
Yeah, if you make stuff like that pop, it gives everything a lot deeper look to it, I've noticed. Right, yeah. And that the little excess that's on there, the little crumbly stuff, I'll get rid of that later. Now I'm going to take some dark brown weathering powder and put some on the wheel faces. I remember this step. What I'm trying to do is to create a layered effect because r real train wheels don't get dirty all at once and they don't get dirty all in the same place. Mm -hmm. Meaning different, you know, they may get dirty in Peoria and then get dirty in some other city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, all the dirt on the wheels is not from the same spot. So I try to layer it. I think it looks more realistic. Now I'm going to use some black weathering powder, which isn't really truly black. It's just more of a dark, really dark gray. Um, I'm going to get the springs a little bit. So it's black on black, kind of, huh? Kind of, but it's just creating a little bit of color variation. Yeah. And I'll do the same thing on the journal boxes. Just to make it pop a little more, huh? Right. So I think that probably is enough for the wheels and trucks. Yeah, so they look gonna, a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I think they're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the sides of the car. And I've got a couple of photos of these things when they were a little later in you know their careers. And they had a bit of a faded look. So I've got this burnt sienna tint pan pastel out again. And I'm going to use this foam applicator that came with the set that I bought of these pan pastels. I'm going to put some of that down the side. Oh, so this is supposed to fade the panels in general? or? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. This is a little heavy right now, but it, I'm not going to leave it like that. Yeah, it seems like it's making a big difference. Yeah, it is. Especially if I look from the left side to the right side. The idea is just to make this a little more faded. And then I'm, I'm just blending it with a brush the same way I would do with powders. It really does seem to go on kind of heavy. Yeah, I'm just using a little bit and trying to spread it around so that it doesn't look, you know, too overdone. I don't want it to be overdone. Is there a way to take some of it off if, if you accidentally put too much? Um, I think I am taking some of it off right now. I'm using the other end of the little spongy thing. Oh, I see you turned it around. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it is, it's coming, some of it's coming off. So and I, I, I like to be subtle with weathering. It's, it's really easy to overdo it. Yeah, I've seen some stuff out there. You just look at it and go like, wow, really? Like, why so much? Yeah. This does give it an oxidized look, though, which is kind of what I'm after, because some of the photos I have show them looking like this. So now I'm going to take some black weathering powder and go over the seams on the car. And I'm doing this really lightly. It's really important to be subtle, because this is another thing that's easy to overdo. Yeah, I remember this also from the weathering and detailing rolling stock. This really makes those panels pop a lot. Gives it a very three-dimensional look. I think this is important, too, after you lighten the sides like the way you did, you know? They start really looking one-dimensional. Yeah, this this makes things um, stand out. It'll bring some of the detail out. Would it be possible to do that with a wash or possibly even with like a colored pencil or even just a regular pencil? Um, you, I'm not sure about pencils in this case because there's rivets there. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure how how good that would work. Yeah, you could do, do it with a wash. I, I tend to be really sparing with washes because I find that sometimes they're hard to control. Yeah, they just kind of run all over, don't they? Yeah, and if... If you get like full size water droplets on on the car, it looks really terrible. <laughs> so I, I'm always careful with that. This is the step that really helps it all blend together is the brushing it. Another thing I noticed in the photos that I have is um there's some streaking. There's like streakers in, the, in your photos? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
No, not that kind of streaking. Um, I mean, streaking coming down from the roof. Oh, right. I get it. Yeah, so I'm going to use that same black. And just do a little bit of that toward the top. Oh, I see. You, you make a motion. I, I get it. The, the motion toward the bottom is what's creating the streak effect. Right. Yeah. So how much of the powder are you actually putting on the brush? Very little. I actually I actually dip it in the powder and then I, I bang the the brush against the side of the jar. Yeah. To to shake most of it off. Cause like I said, it's really easy to overdo this. Yeah, especially if you're doing a dark, dark color on a light, light color or vice versa. Right. In fact, sometimes um, on a silver car, you can even use a gray instead of black. Yeah. And you ach achieve the same thing. But I'm, I'm just using the black and being careful with it. I'm going to use some more black on the tack boards. Yeah, that's going to pop too. This is This is looking so much better. I mean, listen, when you put all the details on, so before any weathering took place, I was thinking, oh, this is a really good looking car. This is looking so much better than even that was, you know? That's great. Yeah. A lot of it's just to try to make it look like there's separate parts as opposed to just being a big hunk of plastic. Yeah. Well, it's like I said, it's adding that depth, that sort of 3D look to it. Yeah. Let me use a little brown now on the door. Put it, put it inside these little crevices. Are you going to do that on the whole door? Or? Yeah, I kind of go up the edges because I've noticed a lot of doors, they seem to be dirtier on the edges than they are in the middle for some reason. Hmm. Um, they also tend to be dirtier at the bottom. Yeah, the bottom makes sense. I'm not sure why the edges would, except yeah. their corners, right, where the edges are. So there's yeah. kind of more places for gunk to so accumulate. Work, work a little bit into the corners. So another thing I noticed from some of the photos of the cars that have been reweighed like this is that sometimes it looks like they weren't too careful with, with the stencil when they put the little red patches on. Hmm. So there was a little bit of overspray. So what I'm doing now is I have some red iron oxide extra dark um, pan pastel, which happens to be a pretty close match for the color that's on the decal. Okay. And I got a smaller brush, and I'm just going to go around the edges just a little bit. Yeah, I'm surprised you can even see that in the picture, let alone be able to put it on. Yeah, look at that. It's really giving that a soft edge, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. It's very subtle, but it just gives a little bit of a sloppier look. Yeah, are you doing that on all of the... Just in selected places. you got to be careful because in the... Over here where there's writing, I don't want to get it on the writing because the writing should look fairly fresh. Yeah. So you just have to be more careful in that area, huh? Right. All right, I'm going to... This ladder looks a little too fresh, so... I've got some more of that brown powder. This time I'm going to use a brush and kind of dab some in there. Oh, wow. I know oh. this looks really heavy right now. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess I know what you're going to do, though, because it's not sticking until you put pressure on it. So you're right. going to blow it out of there? Yeah, I'm going to blow most of this off. So now I blew that off and dusted it a little, or blended it with a brush so that it isn't so... Uh, it was pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Now I've got a little bit of black on a micro brush. I'm going to go in between some of these rungs toward the bottom. As I noticed, the, the photo I'm looking at, the car has... Darker spots, I guess, where people would kick it if they were climbing. Yeah. It seems like maybe even shoes that have a dark sole may end up leaving some of that on the ladder. Yeah. I'm also going to go back to that lighter color pan pastel that I have. That was the Sienna tan or whatever? Yeah, it's a burnt Sienna tint, they call it. Um, and then the photo I'm looking at, this S and P are faded. Oh, that'll do it. So I'm going to go over this a little bit, just right on these letters. So you could do this with a colored pencil too, couldn't you? Um, Yeah, I've done I, that before. I remember um, seeing you do this with a pink colored pencil and remembering thinking pink seemed weird, but then when I thought about it, 
I thought that pink really is a faded red, so it made a right. lot of sense. Right. So, but this works too. Look at that. I mean that that really did just fade those two letters. Mm -hmm. And that's how the photos look too. The the black letters weren't as faded as the red. Yeah. So I've noticed a lot of box cars tend to get dirtier in the areas that the door opens over. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put some black down here. That's the track, right? Yeah, that's the door track and then kind of behind. Yeah, it seems weird that they would, but I guess there must be something on the inside of the doors that must scrape up against the door itself, huh? Yeah. work it into the corners yeah so i, I want to point something out uh that may not be as obvious just watching this but for people who maybe haven't used weathering powders or want to try them but aren't sure or whatever this thing that dan's doing right now that's the trick right there yeah the weathering powders put the color on but it can be so overdone unless you blend it afterwards that's one thing I've noticed watching you do this, Dan, over the years. Yeah, the blending is important. That's In fact, now I'm using a little... This brush has stiffer bristles than the other one, mm -hmm. so this actually blends it even better. Um, another thing I've noticed is that doors often leave streaks uh -huh. on the cars. So I'm going to use a little bit of powder and some pan pastels sort of in combination to make a couple of streaks. So that was powder. I'm just using black. And now I'm going for that rusty pan pastel color. And what is the official name again of that pan pastel color that you're using right there? This is red iron oxide extra dark. Okay. Well, iron oxide is rust, so that is rusty. So I don't want to overdo it. So what does that harder, uh, stiffer brush kind of just scrape some of that stuff off? Um. Yeah, I think it takes some of it off, and it, it also just blends it. And use a little more black on the big brush behind the door just to add a little more dirt. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely griming it up. Yeah. Is that a word, griming? Yeah, now I'll get my other brush and just blend it's a, it. It's a word now, Dan. Yeah. Use a little more of that black up at the top too. Just, just a little little more color up at the top. Now are you gonna do this all the way across the top or just in this yeah, particular just, area? Yeah, all the way. Okay. And then I'll just blend it a little bit. All right, so moving on to the ends. Um, I've got some of that dark red iron oxide uh, pan pastel. I'm gonna oh. use a little bit of that on the coupler. And I'm, I'm using another micro brush to hold the coupler so it doesn't flop around too much. Otherwise, this is hard to do. So in the photo that I'm looking at, the car has some light-colored something on top of the ribs on the end of the car. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's dust or what, but I'm using some of this burnt sienna tint uh, pan pastel uh -huh. on a micro brush, and I'm going to run some of that on the tops of the ribs. Seems almost like it would have been easier to do this before you put the ladder on. I have some of this uh, red oxide, the dark red oxide color on the pan pastels. I'm just going to put a little bit of rust streaking under the roof walk support. I'm going to use that same color on the 
bottom of the supports for the brake platform too. I'm using some black weathering powder to highlight some of the details on the B end. It looks like, like we're approaching the final stretch here, Dan. Yeah, I don't think I want to do too much more to this. It kind of, you know, it's always a question of how far do you want to take it. And when these cars were in overnight service, I think SP actually kept them fairly clean. Uh, after that ended, they were just, I think, thrown back in the regular boxcar pool, and then they got dirtier. Yeah. I'm, I think this is looking pretty good. But I'm going to use a little bit of dark rust-colored uh, weathering powder on the roof walk. Kind of yeah, it definitely definitely needs something because it looks like this bright, shiny, nice, brand new, clean thing on top of an otherwise used car. Right. This is may end up being a little mottled looking, but that's okay because rust isn't you know always uniform. And. Um, Still with that same color powder, but this time with a micro brush so I can get it in some of these tighter areas. And also can do a little bit of pitting on the roof. The roof we already weathered previously, but you can always add a little more. Well, plus if you do it in layers, like you talked about when you were talking about the wheels, that makes sense because roofs don't rust all at the same time either. Right, exactly. So you'd have various stages of rot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not really, I guess it's rot, right? It's kind of like r the rotting of the metal. Yeah. <laughs> rust is. Yeah. Is it possible, Dan, that after eight weeks it's done? Yeah, I think it's done. It looks really neat. Thanks. I mean... You could always go further with it. You know, you could always add more weathering. But um, I think it, it looks pretty good right now. It's it's not exactly like the one that I'm seeing in the photo, but it's it's similar. Yeah, it looks plausible. Yeah, is... and since this isn't a really an authentic car anyway, I think it's, um, you know, it, it, it works. I think this would have looked really neat on the 50s train. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we already did that. But if we ever run it again, this will definitely be thrown in there probably. Yeah, plus I think you have some old Jeeps or something you could throw up behind that might, you know, it might show up on one of those and later yeah. in its career, right? Yeah, right, right. All right, well, that'll do it for, you know, it's it's a little strange. This is not really our inaugural run of model building start to finish since we morphed our, what used to be the video podcast into the model building start to finish. But right. I will say that it's a good end to maybe the second series of episodes. Yeah. All so. right. We'll be back again with our next build. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.